Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. We are done. I, I've, 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 I've had some Get sort closer of and closer to being done. Now, no, let's explain. There's a there's a rotation of commercials, and it's just changed this week. And so Don hadn't figured it out yet. He's the, <laughs> he's the one that changed it. I changed it, and I can't follow my own rules. <laughs> no. Uh, uh. <laughs> From Studio A in Texas, USA, it's the In Wheel Time Card Talk Show. Coming up. We speak with Bill Clem about upgrades to America's truck stops. All right. That ought to be fun. We'll have the upcoming events calendar. Mars reviews the new Kia Kona. Is that the plug-in or is that the electric? It's the plug-in hybrid. Okay. And later, we'll have the latest on the UAW strike, plus the stories making automotive news headlines. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad you could join us on this Saturday. As confusing. Well, and you know what it is. Go Astros. I'm so excited about Astros this mm-hmm. afternoon. And we also have beautiful weather. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The temperatures. It's not 108 today. Yay. And, of course, we have. No, don't do that. Do it, do it, do no, it. No, don't do it. <laughs> I, we, I'm sorry, I can't hit. Yeah. No. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Uh, boomer Sooner. No. Have roll they, roll Tide. Have they They're won on, a game this year? Roll Tide's on this afternoon. They're like so. 0-50 or something, aren't they? OU, they're 5-0. Oh. Texas is 5-0. It's going to be a good game. Red River rivalry. Yeah. What time is that? Noon. Well, it starts at 11. It starts 11? at 11. Yep. So okay. as soon as the show's over, I'm headed for the house to watch the show. Watch so the is there a radio game. station that covers that? I'm sure there is. Yeah. You serve well, more Texas, or anything? You just have to find it. Because they wouldn't be carrying OU here well, in Houston. What snacks do you no, have? No, it'll the game? be on the Texas Longhorn Network or ABC. But or what, ABC, what radio, yeah. Well, what radio station carries the Texas Longhorn Network? The one I listen to. Yeah, which one is that? The one that carries the game. Which one? What's they, it's name the one it. that's on his radio station? <laughs> yeah, over the the, over the, over there in uh, in uh, Hooter. Theater, I want to know what kind of snacks you have, like tofu when you watch an OU game, or you no, know, no, there... no. OU's they eat beef. They oh. eat beef though. Bevo. They eat Bevo. <laughs> they eat Bevo. <laughs> that's a good, good. That a good one. Oh, my God. All right. Well, uh, shall we move on now? Yes. <laughs> uh, Go Blue. Bill Clem, CEO of eBliss. Bill, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Well, we're doing okay. Uh, thanks for getting up and talking to us on a Saturday morning. Uh, no problem. You guys are looking like you're having way more fun than I am. So, Well, uh, yes, we take, are, take actually. Yeah. Well, so yeah. what snacks are you serving at the OU game? <laughs> yes. And uh, do they come from the truck stop that we're going to talk there about? There you go. Yeah, I don't know. No, tacos is what I'm going to be doing, I think. There tacos. you go. Okay. Well, we with that. I will have to tell you that, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've actually been in a real legitimate truck stop like Pilot or mm-hmm. uh, what? Petro. Loves. Loves. Any of those. It's been a while. Because they don't let trucks in at Bucky's. <laughs> I know, and I'm a big Bucky's fan, so there's that. But you're talking about truck stops, real truck stops where the men go. <laughs> yeah, Am well, I- it, yeah, it's it's interesting because you you just look at Bucky's is a great example. I know those guys, and they've done an amazing job, kind of reinventing the roadside stop. Um, you know, who knew that who knew that Walmart could look like a Bucky store with a weird you know, gopher on the front of it, and everybody the on beaver. the planet. Not a gopher. I know. Gopher. I know. Gee I whiz. Said that on we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not a sponsor but, anymore, but they, so they, we're they, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had them. They were paying us millions of dollars to be on, but they just I, I said, no, we're not going to be on with those goofballs. That show wasn't called Leave It to Gopher. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Lord. Yeah. Sorry. But, but moving on. So what happens when you take the late guest spot? <laughs> and that, that's right. This is what happens because we've been up a while, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. No more coffee for you guys. That's exactly right. So first of all, tell me what eBliss does. So so eBliss, um, e- e- what we do is we, we're an OEM for uh, electric products, driving products, but south of cars. So we don't make things that are DOT approved. Um, today we make e-bikes. That's what we do today. Um, but we are, you will see us making other things 
kind of up the food chain a little bit um, going towards automotive. So as we think about, as we, as I look at the market and we look at the market as a team, um, there's an enormous consumer demand for alternatives for vehicles, right? Everybody is, especially for these short drives. And so what we, what we're doing is filling that need by building products and services associated with that. The other thing we're doing differently is we will be distributing those through automotive franchise dealerships. So we just announced last week on Auto Week, um, we've signed 45 dealerships that will be rolling out e-bikes and e-mobility products into. So we believe that the US auto dealer network is the most advantaged economic distribution system in the world for transportation. So we're gonna drop our stuff in the middle of that. Very gotcha. good. And especially it's good timing for you with the auto UAW strike and they're going to run out of inventory of cars. They can sell your E-Bliss products. Yeah. And they, yeah, think about it, right? The auto dealers are in transition. Last year, auto dealers, 17,000 auto dealers, $1.7 trillion of revenue. Just take a step back and think about that. That's bigger than Russia, right? That's, that is a GDP bigger than most countries. And that's just the auto dealer network. So as we think about this, this is this is a huge set of balance sheets, to your point, that are going to struggle over the next few years with availability of vehicles, quite frankly, changing consumer demand, the electrification, you know, stuff that's going on that we talked about last time I was on here. Um, you know, that those things are going to change auto dealers. So while we're in the middle of this change, we're going to we we establish them as our channel of distribution. So you're going to help them change. That's that's kind of the that's kind of the game plan, but as but as I kind of look around, so I I decided to do something silly and I bought an EF one fifty, so please don't look down on me for that. Um, <laughs> but but I but I decided to do that. If I'm going to run an e mobility company, I was decided I was going to do that, and I've taken four I would say extending rides in that vehicle, and I would tell you that the charging infrastructure is not ready for convenient cross-country trip in an electric vehicle that's for sure True. Is, you're is, not going to get any argument out of us is but, that is that I what know. is that what puts you into the uh, truck stops yeah that's so so when i think about this as i look at as i look at this and bucky's was a great example right those guys understood that there was a there was an offering that was missing for consumers to ride down the road and get nice bathrooms right that was their opening salvo to the marketplace clean bathroom but now when you look at it you know as a guy that's driven like i said made three attempts to make long distance drives in an electric vehicle truck stops are a perfect place to be able to put these charging stations in and in my opinion the faster they can get charging stations everywhere think about how many gas stations are out there mm -hmm. versus electric charging stations you know it's it is such a big number that you know truck stops i think are the perfect opportunity to be able to to be able to make that happen why do you think that oh, that over uh, say your instant little convenience store down the street just i think that i think one you're going to be able to put enough of them in so you're going to have an you're going to be able to put five ten fifteen of those down to really make an impact you put it i by the way i'm not opposed to the convenience store down the street but the electric infrastructure to put one of those charging stations in you're actually better served if you put two or three or four of them of course right next to each other because it's kind of like building a wind turbine right everybody wants to build the biggest ones because once you build the base most of your cost is in it same thing goes in electric charging infrastructure there is a economy of scale of putting those in and those truck stops have enormous parking lots and it, again easy in and out it would make it very convenient for consumers you know 5 10 15 of these to be able to get their vehicles charged that would be a heck of a lot more convenient than the experiences i've had well plus uh, and at the truck stop you might have a reason to spend 15 20 25 minutes inside the truck stop whether you're taking a shower doing some shopping using the restroom uh, and getting something to eat but now oh, totally agree go ahead I'm sorry. some of the truck stops though like my wife is not a big fan of truck stops now she likes bucky's because it's clean and it's neat but i know for example there's a truck stop between here and there that <laughs> it, it's basically the same concept it's got a lot of stuff in it like you would see at a love's truck stop or something like that uh -huh. but it's dirty 
I mean, that's all you can say. It's just dirty. The bathrooms aren't clean. The hall, the down between the aisles isn't clean. And there's a whole lot of truck stops out there like that. I, 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 again, I don't disagree. I think the journey of change. So I just, I just look around to say, where's the real estate that you could use most effectively. That makes sense. Yep. That's what that makes sense. Right. So, but to your, but to your point, my wife isn't going to go to the restroom in one of those necessarily either. She's a big fan of Bucky's because of that. So again, great marketing, but I'm going to tell you, I think the peer pressure associated with what Bucky's is doing, you can see it when you drive from Austin to Houston, live in Austin, drive to Houston quite often. You can see there's been an upgrade in all of the locations Absolutely. around there that's been driven by Bucky. Especially so these, up there around 71 and uh, Elgin. Yeah. Do you see, with, with the EVs and the charging station we talked about, do you see the the large transport, this big semi-trucks going to an EV? I mean, they're, they're out there with certain companies and certain manufacturers. Yeah. Do you see that being implemented at these stops? Um, so, again, I... Uh, so I think you and I, I think we talked about this before, but I'll say it again. There's probably 10,000 inventions that have to be commercialized to be able to make ubiquitous charging for a full fleet of electric vehicles. I mean, 10,000 inventions. That's not just an invention. That's making it affordably as well. So back to your point on heavy truck, I have not seen the math. Anybody's shown me the math in which it makes sense for the energy density of today's battery to be able to be placed in an econ you know in a cube that is worthwhile to put into a truck the joke i've had with a few people in the industry at the senior level is that e your your only payload in a truck is going to be the battery so that's kind of the only thing you're going to be able to carry in the truck is the battery you're not going to carry any freight um again i'll, I'll give you a, again personal experience on the f-150 truck is beautiful i a Ford guy, I grew up there inside of Ford, so I love Ford. I love their vehicles. But I would tell you that when I when I added one more human and two bicycles to the back of to the back of that truck, my distance went from three hundred and twelve miles to one hundred and eighty miles, and I didn't drive wow. once. it just it just recognized that the load. to the point that you're making on heavy truck. If it's that kind of reduction when you add weight to something, which is clear, and you can read all the blogs on the on the big tr on the trucks that are out there, it, it, they're not they're not ready yet. So but you, it's not so it's you still can, not a bad. God, I'm sorry. No, so you can see Lay's potato chips doing a good job with an EV truck, but not anybody else that's trying to haul haul eighty thousand pounds worth of product. Yeah, well, Lay's Potato Chips, I think, is owned by Pepsi, so you couldn't mix the truck with Pepsi products as, and Lay's Potato Chips. But, but, but to your, but to the point, I, I think that's real. The technology, that circle, that that arc of technology development and commercialization has not reached the point in which these things are out there. So I'm going to go back to another one of my fundamental principles. I think that there's a misalignment between government regulation and and the and and what is being pushed onto automakers and and the marketplace and technology readiness and i don't believe that the government as in the u.s government has aligned with industry to create an environment where ceos like myself would make those big bets because the only thing i'm going to do if i'm going to try and electrify a vehicle with today's fundamental physics it's not going to work it's going to be i'm going to lose money on it it's not going to satisfy the customer and the shareholders are going to be upset, but yet, yet the government is pushing these, 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 these kind of influences on the marketplace, and and I just I don't agree with it. Hmm. Well, we just got through reading an entire list of vehicles, brand new EVs that are going to hit the market here in the next uh, eighteen months, and it's fifty of them, and that's just the list that Automotive News put together. Yep, and uh, I I cannot even imagine some of these startup companies being successful there may be two or three outside of the general bunch of them that are out there now but not the number that i'm well, reading today without significant uh, government uh, stimulation in the market through tax um reductions or incentives. tax credits or tax, through investments. Of tax credits, yes i agree with you Go or, ahead, or through investments like you know what uh federal government just Gave Ford nine and a half billion dollars to build a battery plant, um, you know, and and without 
federal tax money subventing the cost of production of all of these things, I just don't see it as viable. It's got to get to the point where it is, it can be monetized at every level before people are going to be interested in owning an EV personally. Well, the, what you just said about that for the EV, that's in the new contract. Right. So The UAW con- contract. Exactly. Yeah. So that can be manipulated later on. So, so, so think about a couple of the things. How many electric bus companies have survived? No, none. So bus, none. Zero. They've all, they're all, they're all, they're all going through some sort of reorganization. And why is that? Because the technology isn't ready for, unless you're going to put a massive government subsidy on every vehicle, you're not ready for it, right? Uh, Ford's going to lose $4 billion on their EV projects this year. That's their reported number, not my estimate. So, you know, the only guy that's out there making money, doing a great job is Tesla and BYD. Those are the two companies, in my opinion, to watch is BYD and Tesla. BYD, you know, arguably, I made a speech in China about five or six years ago, and I was in Shanghai. It must have been 500 people in the room. And I made the statement that the Chinese will lead the world in EV development and commercialization, um, not not for any other reason other than the fact that the Chinese population has never driven a vehicle before, so they don't know what range anxiety is all about. And so that's what they're used to. So everybody will grow up with EVs because you're going from an ox cart to an electric vehicle. That's an easy trade-off for consumers in China. The United States, we have a, we have a much more discriminating taste. Right. I want to go 400 miles on a tank of gas and take 15 minutes and, you know, and refuel and move on it. And, uh, and I would tell you that in driving my electric vehicle, I get range anxiety when I as soon as I unplug and get on the road. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, We're right with I'm you. Literally watching that thing go down because of the pain in the neck it is to get the darn thing charged. That's distracted driving. Well, it, it is. But I mean, it's you know, on several different levels. Yeah, especially it's... when your wife's sitting next to you and she's she's not <laughs> mechanically inclined, and so these things are a giant mystery to her. Other than the fact that that counter is going down, and we just had to sit in a rest area with no services for hour and a half to get your vehicle charged. And she, and she's very G- aware of that. And she's the GPS. And a Ford uh, Lightning's too heavy for your wife to push. Uh, it, 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 yes, and my and my wife is Korean, and my wife is very direct about these things, and I'm <laughs> usually the one on the other side of that directness. Ah. <laughs> You're the catch-all, Bill. We could have you on for the entire show, yeah. all three hours of it. There so you go. Uh, we're gonna have to I, schedule. I enjoy that. the hell out of you guys. You guys are great. I love I love your insights. Well, thanks, um, and and we appreciate you. But I and, and I want to get back with you maybe next week or the week after, where we could talk more about the truck stops because i think that that you have something there that uh, is viable and they the truck stop companies need to to evolve yeah they need to evolve and clean up their act listen i completely agree i think the roadside in general has got to clean up you're going to have people spending more time on the side of the road you need to be able to have those things you need to make the necessary easy it needs to be pleasant otherwise new encumbrance Bucky's is going to come at the truck stop level. Yep. Just a bank on it. The entrepreneur, those guys in general, they they'll go build truck stops to just do that and and show everybody how to do it right. So, gentlemen, appreciate it. The only other thing I'd like to leave you with is read our article in um in in Auto Week about uh, about us entering the auto dealer space. Anytime you'd like to talk about that, I'd love to talk about that too. We shall yeah, yeah, next, we do our, that. Uh, next time we talk to you. Yeah. Bill, again, thanks so much. Great to talk to you. CEO of Bliss. We'll talk to you soon. Ebliss.global. Ebliss.global. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, cool, time cool, now cool. here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. For the car review, Mr. Mars has the Kia Kona. Yeah, I found this vehicle to be very interesting. So this is a 2023 Kia. What did I tell you? Kona? No, Nero. 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 Touring. Did I tell you Kona? Duda, duda. Oh, my God. (laughs) Mars, did you do this again? I don't know. Did I? I did. Hey, while you're looking, it says for right that. there. It says Kona on it. Oh, okay, my bad. We're not talking about the Kona. We're going to talk about the 2023 Kia. Oh Nero. my god! <laughs> PHV PHEV SX Touring. Mars now. Mars. No, 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 no. I got work to do here. Leave me alone. L-O-M-N-O-P. 
So this is a compact crossover <laughs> available in five trim dev levels. LX, EX, EX Touring, SX, and SX Touring. Now, the other one's got this six. vehicle is available in three different electrified power plants. You can get a hybrid. You can get a plug-in hybrid, or you can get an all-electric in one of these trim levels. Fully and big. mine is the plug-in hybrid is the one that we had. Again, we're talking about a compact crossover. The styling on this vehicle follows along the lines of the EV6. It's just a little bit larger. It's black C-pillar trim on it that comes up onto the back C-pillar that's really kind of, kind of one of those things. Unique is a good way to put it. Either you like it or you kind of eh, don't like it so much. The, uh, of course, it comes with LED lighting, the headlights, fog lights, tail lights are all out there. Front, up front you're going to find rain sensing wipers, got po power folding side mirrors, got the smart power lift gate on it, got a power sunroof, and it comes with 16 inch wheels standard, but we happen to be on 18 inch alloy wheels because we were in the SX Touring model, so it's top of the line. We also, when you get into the inside, we're going to find that we've got the Syntex seating surfaces, the front seats are heated. The second row outboard seats are heated, so we got heated in the second row. Uh, the drivers, the eight, for the center stack, it's standard with an 8-inch monitor on it. We had the 10.25-inch touchscreen where you're going to find your nav and your convenience controls. And the driver has a 10.25-inch driver screen where he's going to find all his controls that we used to call a gauge package. It also has a very good Harman Kardon audio system in it. And it has some other pretty good technology. It has five USB ports, has a wireless charging, but it does not have a wireless connection. You have to plug it in to use your CarPlay or no Android. Bluetooth. Android. It doesn't, the, the, that connection doesn't make it. It's, it's kind of weird not to have that with everything else that it's got. What the heck? So up under the hood, it had a 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine with electric motor. Produces 139 combined horsepower. Fall, it's backed by a six-speed dual-clutch transmission. Now, the EPA says on the EV and the gas combination, you're looking at 108 miles to, I guess, what the equivalent of a gallon of gas, or 48 miles to gallon gas only in the combined. Now, I drove this vehicle 405.6 miles, and I got 40.2 average just off the fuel across there, and I thought it was great. I put some gas in it before I sent it back to the press fleet. And I was amazed at what five gallons of gas would do to the range on that thing. It was, it was, I like this vehicle. It's got very quiet in the urban driving situations. Uh, out on the highway, it's got a little bit of road noise, but crank up the Harman Kardon and you don't even notice it. Uh, and, and so I would say it's more of an urban type vehicle, more inside the city than out on the highway. It does come, I wanted to note, with the 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty includes the EV components. Base trim price on the base model of this is twenty six five ninety. Now the base trim price for the SX Touring that we were driving is thirty nine thousand four hundred ninety dollars. Our as tested price forty one thousand six hundred thirty five dollars mm. for that vehicle. Now if you're looking to compare it to it, kind of because of the sizing, it's a little bit. But you can look at the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid for twenty seven nine seventy start. The Honda CRV has a hybrid starting at 32.4 and even get into a Toyota Prius for 27,450. <laughs> and that, gentlemen, as again, I said, I like driving that car around town. I thought it was pretty good. And that is my review of the 2023 Nero P H E B S X Touring. Spell Nero. N I R O N A. N I O. <laughs> I'm ignoring what you're saying. Uh, Nero. N I R O P N I R O P H E V P H E V What S X Touring S X Touring Hey real real quick uh lifelong friend of mine lives in Castle Rock Colorado listening to the show he is driving up to the mountains to uh Glenwood Springs he's spent 3 days in the mountains looking at all the lovely lush changes of colors Todd Sheldon degree Okay, well, just saying that. Time now for the events calendar, Conrad. So we talked earlier about the uh, All British Car Show at the Butler House off of Gosling Road. Uh, that's next week, Friday. Next weekend, it starts uh, at nine at nine p.m. Uh, Friday, October twentieth, is the thirty-eighth annual Wolf Creek Car and Truck and Bikes Show in Cold Spring. On uh, eleven four, the fourth annual Memorial Benefit Taps and Turbos Car Show. 
at No Label Brewing in Katy. Uh, the Northside Car Club is having their fall open car show November 4th uh, at Bull Salas Park in New Caney, Texas. Uh, October 28th is the Ock Turbo Fest at Karam Shriners in Waco, Texas. And then uh, this weekend, uh, they're ha- excuse me, next weekend, they're having the uh, annual Heroes and Hot Rod Veterans Day weekend show in downtown Bastrop. Great show. Go. That's the Nero P-H-E-V, not the Kona. Too much Maui Wowie. <laughs> <laughs> or, or uh, like the vehicle that I just turned in, uh, the I don't remember what it was, but I remember that it, <laughs> it, was, I, a, it was a made Hornet. such an impression. It was, the, on it, was you. it was the Hornet. Hornet. It, but the the color of it was Acapulco gold. Yeah, you remember Acapulco gold? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's still coming down off it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From the nineteen sixties. All right. I want to remind you that this program is available 24-7 on iHeartRadio. Just search In Wheel Time Car Talk. <laughs> we also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InWheelTime.com. 30-minute podcasts at your fingertips. And over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets. The In Wheel Time Car Talk show continues right after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla right. Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katy is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invite you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance is proud to be a part of America's largest block party. It's the 27th annual Cruise in the Coast, October 1st through the 8th. Great antique, classic, hot rod, and dragsters all along a 30-mile stretch of beach. Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, Gulfport, Ocean Springs, Pascagoula, and more. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance will be on site October 5th through the 8th at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum, manning the Chevrolet trailer displays. Come see us for additional information at cruisingthecoast.com. Biggest race in the country. Also, Rogers Dab Chevrolet GM Performance is proud to be a part of the 10th annual Lone Star 600 at Devil's Bowl Speedway in Mesquite. October 6th and 7th, $25,000 to win. Any car can race and is locked into the race. 300 laps both nights, 7 o'clock start times. Racers from all around the U.S. and beyond. Additional information at LoneStar600.com. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.